Good day, YouTube. This is Captain Darren. My amateur radio call sign is N4VFR. In today's video, I'm going to show you my new MFJ998RT, the remote tuner. And I plan on putting that at the base of my 05 antenna. But first, let me have some coffee. Now let's open the box. Okay, so this is the box that it comes in. And uh, we're just gonna quickly open it and see what's inside. There shouldn't be a whole lot to it. A lot of the uh, vendors for this MFJ are out of stock. Yeah, they're out of stock. So I put my name on the list to order one and they called me up and they asked if you're still interested in purchasing one, they received one in stock. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I got the MFJ998 remote tuner. And that's how it's packed, just like that. Oh, I got a sticker. All right, so it's double box, a box in a box. A couple of my buddies, friends, they said uh, to open up the the tuner and take a look. Make sure everything's intact, no loose screws. Making sure that the cover is not touching the circuit board. This is all what's in it. Okay, you got a power cord there. I think there's a bias T on the inside somewhere. That's the bias T. And that is all what's inside. And if you need a manual, it's telling you to log to their website to download the manual. Okay, I got the uh, 998 antenna tuner. I got it on my desk. Uh, just took it out of the box. There's nothing loose inside like some of the reviewers I saw. They mentioned there were some loose screws, but uh, this one, nothing. But we're going to take a look on the inside, make sure everything is kosher, and um, verify that nothing is rubbing up against the microprocessor and so forth. So, so this unit won't catch on fire. That's what I heard. But uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's open this bad boy up. I just saw one screw that was not on. It's right here. See it? It's not on. So, yeah, let's. It's better to inspect it. It's not even in. I just pulled it out with my my fingers. I got one stubborn screw that doesn't want to come out. On the inside there is foam on the lip for weatherproofing. I'm inspecting for any kind of loose bolts.
locking pin and I'm just going to take this heat shrink tubing and then heat shrink it just like this together. I'm going to test the power just to make sure that there is current going through the power plug here. I got it connected to the power pole distribution outside the shield. The center is the positive. I got 13.84. Perfect. All right, guys. Uh, I got a, a recommendation from one of my buddies. Um, his name is Dom, W4DOM. He mentioned uh, to inspect the uh, inside of the uh, 998RT because this shield, this portion right here, this little lip, that sometimes may contact the board and short it out. And there's one person down in South Florida, uh, I don't know his call sign, but it was uh, from Dom. He was telling me that his 998 that was attached to the flagpole antenna caught on fire. Here in Florida, we get extreme temperatures. Either it goes from cold, it gets to hot, so there's contraction of, of the, the aluminum. You know, the aluminum expands and contracts. And um, when it's rubbing up against that circuit board, on those railroad tracks with those wires. I'm gonna show you here in a second. And uh, it shorts it out. And when he's transmitting on it, and it would catch fire. It'll heat up and catch fire. So let me show you what I'm looking at. And I'm gonna inspect it with an, a magnifying glass to take a look and see there's no um, scratches on the board before I uh, make modifications to it. We're looking at the uh, shield that's mounted on the board. I got all the screws removed. And if you can focus your eyes on this area right here, okay, that is where it's really close to being in contact with the board. So I'm going to lift the shield up and take a look. See right here? There we go. See right here, this is the part I'm worried about that's going to be touching these railroad tracks on the board. So if you break the contact, it might not work, or if you short it out with the board, uh, that may cause problems. So I'm going to get a magnifying glass. This is not for you, this is for me to look at. And I'm looking for any scratches that may cause problems. I'm using this one here. This has a little bit more magnification. It's not intended for you guys to look at. I'm just taking a peek. I felt it. There's no... There's no cuts, visually inspected. I don't see anything. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a modification. All right, these are the washers I'm going to use. I'm going to place them on the standoffs and carefully mount the shielding back on it. But before I mount the shielding on it, I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect are the uh, the heat shielding or the heat shrink on the shield so this is the heat shrink with adhesive so i cut the it long enough and i slit down the middle so just like that and i'm going to apply it onto the shield just like that so i just want to pre prevent the bottom of the shield from rubbing against that circuit board right here. Okay, you know that uh, the circuit board on those railroad tracks that you saw earlier right here. So that's how I'm gonna do it. You can do it your way. 
you can your way maybe like uh, I mentioned file this down so let me use the heat gun and try to get those uh, attached Ooh, this bad boy's hot. I heat it up and then squeeze it. Heat it up, squeeze it on. Damn, it's hot. Heat it up and squeeze. Remember there's adhesive on this. Alright, cooling it down now. Alright, here, take a look. This is the, right here. That's the heat shrink and it is glued up against that metal. That's what I wanted to uh, prevent chafing of the circuit board. Install the, the washers and we're going to reattach the shield. It's on there. It's just resting on top of the post. All right, we got all the six standoffs already in position. I'm going to line up the, the top portion first. All right, I see it there. Looking at the base. Okay, come straight down. There, nothing shifted. My main concern are these three bolts right here. I gotta get those in first because those washers are a lot bigger than the, the standoff. I mean, it's just a little bit bigger. You guys can't see him yet. He's behind the scenes. Mike, KG2 Mike Mike is here in the house. But he recommended toothpicks, but I couldn't find any. But we're gonna use like you can use bread ties and well this is bigger than the diameter but I think a toothpick would work better so you basically stick it down in the hole as you're lining it up and then bring it down but uh, let's continue I'm not going to shift it so far so much that's a flathead and this screwdriver is a little bit big Okay, just a couple turns. That's one. I'm gonna come across here. Okay, that's two. See something like that? The washer is still in the place. So if I had a toothpick. I can center the washer to get it down in the middle, centered. Okay, that's good. That's there, that washer's there. 
Okay, those are the three other ones. The three others has a, a lock washer. So we got to make sure we put that on there too. And that's for the other three holes. I'm not tidying it down yet. I just want to get all corners attached. Okay, all of them attached. Okay, good. I'm going to start tightening it down. I'm just tightening it down snug, not over tightening it. All right, cool. We're done. So we got washers on all six posts underneath the shield that raised it up. And we also have that heat sink underneath that lip that protects the shield from rubbing up against the circuit board. So here's a closer shot. It's really hard to get up in there, but I'll do the best. All right, so that heat sink, it's on the bottom of that lip and it's providing a barrier from the jagged edge of the shield from touching the circuit board. So that's my modification and I got a recommendation from Dom, W4DOM. He told me about this and other people had issues with shorting out their 998RT and uh, destroying it or catching on fire. All right, let me show you how I have this connected. I didn't put the cover back on first because I wanted to set, set it up properly. But uh, right now there's two ways that you could uh, attach power to it. One is you can go cur you can go directly to the antenna and it takes a 12 volt DC. And the second option is to go to the power inserter, which is right here. The MFJ bias T. So we're going to go that route and the reason why I'm going to go this route is I want to make sure that the bias T box is working properly. Bear with me. I don't have a workbench. I'm using my actual desk. So there's an input and I turn it on and you hear it click and I see power. So what's connected is a jumper cable that goes from the RF DC out and it's going to the antenna tuner and that's called transmitter DC input. Let me show you the display. All right, so if your unit that you have doesn't come on there is a power button here okay you push it on it comes on uh, you need to hold down mode for a few seconds by default the SWR is 1.5 I'm okay with that to change it you use your C up and C down I'll leave it at 1.5 push mode again and I'm just gonna leave everything default I want to make sure that my radio is selected for this tuner which is right here in order to change that radio interface you do the C up C down okay for now ICOM and everything's in default so I'm not going to change all that great now I'm going to go live with this and connect it to the ICOM 7610 and let's see how that works. All right guys, I finally got everything connected. How I have it connected, I'm coming, I'll zoom in a little bit. 
There you go. So I'm coming out from the ICOM 7610 and it's going to the MFJ Bias T, the RFN, okay? And then from the output, the RF DC out, that goes to the remote amplifier. Let's zoom in a little bit. Here we go. That's going to the RT, or, um, that's going into the 998RT. That's the transmitter DC input. And here, the coax out, this is the coax out. I'm using the Messi and Poloni coax. As a matter of fact, I just got it in the mail as I was making this video. That Messi and Poloni coax is now going to the my AB switch. And right now it's connected to the 05. So we're gonna test that out and uh, we're on 20 meters and we're gonna test it and see how this MFJ 998RT works. This is my IC7610 that we're using. The power output is set to 19% power. The mode of operation is RITTY, R-T-T-Y. And we're going to tune the 998RT with the 05 antenna. How I tune this, I'm gonna push the transmit button Okay, now I got forward is 10 watts of power, reflected is 0.6 watts, and the SWR is 1.6. All right, 10 meters. All right, we're gonna move down to 18 megahertz. What's 18, that's 17 meters? Mm -hmm. We got 17 meters, okay, we just picked the frequency there. I'm still on RIDI, 19% power, and I'm tuning with the transmit button on the ICOM. Not the tune button, but the transmit button on RTTY. SWR is 1.0, 4 is 11.7 watts and with zero reflected power. And uh, let's try 7 megahertz, uh, 40 meters. Let's go on 7.200. And again, RTTY with 19% power and transmit. SWR is 1.0 with a forward of 13 watts, reflected power. And uh, I'll show you continuous recording. Also on the display of the radio SWR down at the bottom, it's zero, putting about, I don't know, 13 watts. And turn off the transmit. All right, let's go test uh, 40, 80, maybe uh, 160. All right, we're on 7.200. I think I already tested it out, but let me try it again. Yeah, I've already tested it out. You can see uh, 13 watts, 1.0, and it's perfect match. All right, we're gonna go down to 75 meters. 39.50, all right. Mike says go to 39.50. ARES. That's ARES, Amateur Radio Emergency Service, hang out. Frequency is clear, 80 meters. All right, I'm gonna go to the ready, RTTY. Power output, I got 90, 19%. Tuning now. Look at that, 3.950, it, it sensed the frequency and 1.0 SWR with 13 watts and no reflected, perfect match. This coax run is 70, no, 150 feet, I think. So I'm going to mount this antenna uh, tuner, remote tuner, to the base of the 05 antenna. One more to check. Let's take a look at 160 and see if we can tune with a 05 43 foot vertical. We're on 160 uh, meters, uh, 1.9 megahertz. 
frequency is clear using again ready 19 watts of power and here I tune Come on, jackpot. Big money, big money, big money. I want a mega million. Oh my God, it tuned. 1.10 <laughs> 1 .1, reflected, now it's 1.0, reflected, 13 watts of power. Okay, so the MFJ998RT works really well here at the desk, at my ham shack, but this is not the permanent location. Stay tuned guys, I'm going to show you how I set this up and I got this huge rock that's going to protect this from the weather. Now I'm going to put the cover back on, I'm going to connect the amplifier to this, my OM2000 and uh, watch me install this at the base of the antenna of the Zero 05. Alright, let's put this bad boy back on. All right. Nothing's getting pinched, I'm just double checking. There's a modification DOM W4DOM told me. Let me turn this off. Now I'll leave that on. Turn it off from the, I turn it off from the bias T. Because once you turn this switch off, there ain't no way you can turn it back on once you get the cover on. But DOM W4DOM mentioned someone had cut open a window so that you can see the display and uh, obviously the plexiglass and they had to to weatherproof it but i'm not going all the way out there because this is going to be under a rock a heavy rock so let me put this back together there is weather seal on it i can feel it push it down and let's button it up There, nice and snug, not too tight. I just tightened it enough where I can see the the pl the plastic kind of like bend a little bit. But that's it. I'm going to detach all this and relocate this antenna tuner outside. This is where we at now. Uh, at the base of the zero five antenna, I got the uh, post digger. I'm going to go down three feet down and we have the MFJ all right all of that post is going to be underground that's about three feet and the access to the coax is there at the bottom okay so while that's inside then I got this massive rock this rock will be placed over on top of, of the MFJ 998 RT. RT stands for remote tuner. All right. That's the 05, 43 feet tall, vertical. All right, let me uh, start digging again, continuing. And I got Mike over there. I don't know if you can see, I'm going to zoom him in. He's over there in the shade. We over here in Atlantic Beach, Florida. It's really hot. Look at that sun. It's just beating down on us. The mark. Oh yeah, that's what we want. All right, Mike's gonna test fit it. Yeah, it's Mike. Okay, I'm, I'm hitting soil. Okay, he's hitting soil. That's a good enough clearance yes. right there. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, just let that lean, and let's try to put that rock over, and see how that works. Yeah, just, just lead it right there. Here you go. 
Let me get on this side because I got the, sh the sun. There you go. That's my massive rock. It's covering the 998RT along with my gardenias. So when I'm out here transmitting, I can smell the roses or actually gardenia. So uh, that's a good fit. All right, now we're going to uh, put that, yeah, backfill that uh, 998. Uh, you can go ahead and remove that for me, please. Okay, and uh, we're going to, all right, good. Yeah, we're going to backfill that in. You can see how close it is to the ground. I think I'm going to add, I need to add a little bit more soil just to raise it up. Maybe about three or four uh Four inches. All right, we're gonna back. We're gonna backfill this. Uh, want me to just hold it right there? Yeah, it was, yeah. You can hold it just like that. Because all you gotta do is this. This wood is faced. It's uh, leaning against the the wall. So. That's good. Oh, I don't have to hold it anymore. All right, take your fingers and push them in the front of the, the, front of the post there. I think in there with the shovel. What do you mean? There the should be a gap. No. Right, this gap? In between, at the bottom, underneath. Oh, okay. Between the posts. Yeah, I see. You're going to have to put that by hand. You're going to have to do that by hand. What do you mean? Push, push some of this excess into the hole. Oh, I see what you're saying. In the back yeah. down in here. Okay, gotcha. Big hole, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I need I need more. I'll give you some more soil. Okay, the packet right there. I'll be right back. Let me put this away. Yeah, what I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to fill in that gap that's in front of that this. This wood 2x4, pack it down in there, just the best I can do. I raise it a little bit. There you go. Put it in, fill in that gap, that void. It's a mess. Your fingernail, unless you want to get gardening gloves, you can put them on. I'm raising it also just in case if it, if it tends to get flooded in this area. That I have ground clearance. Okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hold it up here. You, yeah. you can see better. Yeah, there you go. All right, can you push it down? Yeah, I can push it down. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll settle back in. Just make sure it's nice and packed around there. Karate chop. All right. Is that good enough? Yeah. Right, right there. Yeah, I got. I have access down underneath. Okay. Let me put this out the way. Ground radials back yeah. on. Yeah. I believe through time this is going to compact itself. Oh yeah. So I'm not not to worry. I have easy access, so I don't need to go underneath it. I can just come outside and then screw it in. Yeah. Hey, if, I if, might not need these uh, 90 degree bends. Might not. Yeah. See those? You see those guys? I got the uh, I got the 90 degree bend for the uh, the coax. Can't get too much on it. Good. Can you come back Shoot. down on it? 
Yeah, I could come back down on it. It was just sideways. Okay, that's good. That's, that's not going anywhere. No. No hurricanes taking that away. <laughs> Well, right. I can't go back in the house with these muddy shoes. No. All right. All right. In the meantime, before you wash your hands, see if you could brush some all that dirt off. Yeah, I'm gonna get a blower. Okay. Yeah. What are we doing now? All right. So I took the uh, I took the coax coming from the shack, and this is going to the DCN on the on the tuner here. Do we leave the 90 degree band? Um, no, I don't think we need it. Actually, right. yeah. Take, take out the 90 I'll take degree. I'll take the 93. Can, can, you can use it on the summer. Out. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know. Okay. Yeah, there you go. No loss. <laughs> Alright, so that's the transmitter DC input. That's the, uh, the power, the 12 volt power. Yeah, the 12 volt power comes along this line as well as your RF signal um, to activate the tuning function. Now I'm putting the coax from the output of the tuner. Yeah, that's the, that's the output. And it's going to be connected to And I'm bringing the, it around since you lower your pole this way. Yeah. I'm bringing it around to the ballon. The 4.1, 41 ballon. The ground, you want to attach to this ground point here. All of it's it's all connected together. Or you want to use the nut here. It's up to you. Or whichever one that you could get access to easier. That's probably the best. That's already all ground right. there and that's yeah. connected. It's connected here, and I have a, a additional ground wires going to the base plate. You can see it there. All right. So let me do that, or I, I can. Or you can do it to the base plate, either or. Yeah, it's all connected. It doesn't matter. Okay. So let me connect the ground. All righty. All right, I'm using these um, stainless steel bonding strap. It's uh, flexible. This is just going to be temporary until I can get my copper wire. I'm going to do a copper wire uh, or a bonding strap from there and directly to the to the uh, the ground plate. But temporarily for now, let's do this. I'm going to take this off and attach it. I'm going to wrap it twice and attach it here. All right, this is just temporarily. Nice and firm. Cool. Coax fitting. I'll do that later. I'll weatherproof that later. Uh, now, let's go test the antenna for the first time and see if that DC power goes to the 998RT. And let's tune on several different bands. All right. This is my fake rock. It fits. Okay, we're back in the Radio Shack, the ICOM 7610, and um, <clears throat> a little bit of a uh, pulsating noise and we're going to tune right now I'm on 20 meters we're going to tune on 20 meters utilizing the MFJ 998RT so I'm going to put the camera up close so you can take a look at what I'm looking at when I push tune all right we are 20 meters okay I unmute it I'm just going to turn the volume down just a little bit so you can hear a little bit of noise. But the whole goal is to tune and see if the MFJ998 works at my current setup. There's someone on 280. I'm just going to move down.
Okay, we're on 20 meters. Power output is 19 percent. We're going to go into RTTY. That's the only way I can tune. And push transmit. Bias T is on. Here we go. Uh, SWR is 1.8. Let me go increase more power. 25% power. RTTY. 1.8. So there's no way of me knowing if it's tuning. So what we got to do, we got to try a different band. Let's try 17. 17 meters, uh, 8. 150 something like that right about here I'm listening eighteen one fifty is clear there's someone here on the lower eighteen one forty ish we're good going to RTTY I'm going to go 20% on the power and tune. SWR is 2.7. Okay, we're on 15 meters. RTTY is the mode of operation. Uh, here's the SWRs down at the bottom. You can take a look at that. Power setting is uh, looking at 20 watts. No watts, it's 20% of power. The tuner's off. We're going to transmit on RTTY and let's see if this will tune to one to one. It's showing at 1.5 right now. 28% power, 1.7. Okay, let me try a different band. Let's go to uh, 80 meters. Power is 20% power. A lot of noise. Uh, RFI, you can see down here. And tuner is off. The built in tuner is off and transmitting. SWR is high, it's an infinity. And I have no indication of it tuning. So we're going to troubleshoot a little more. We'll be right back and I'll let you know what we find. All right, so we troubleshot the problem. This polyphaser was my 05. I just relabeled it now. I got my DX commander, using, I'm using that as my DX commander now. So the 05 is now at this access point, okay? We tested the voltage on the T bias and that was 13.7. Uh, we tested at this end here 13.7 on the other side of the pass through and also we tested it all the way to the antenna there and that's also reading 13.7 voltage and we were able to tune on 20 meters so that was a problem this the T bias may have been grounded using this polyphaser so that's the first time um, I experienced a problem, but the polyphaser seems to be working because I'm receiving a signal. I got Mikey playing with the uh, 7610. He's receiving a signal. We're on 20, 14313. Putting it on slow, kind of. Kind of gets those pulsing okay. out of the out also. Yeah, he just he just changed the uh, the water scope to speed to slow. Okay, but have you see that there's a lot of RFI noise? Okay. All right. 
line. Well, I think we have no problems with the DX commander, right? We're receiving signals. Yeah, yeah, there's no problem. Yeah, tune, tune up real quick because we're using a polyphaser. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it tunes up. All right, so this is my take. We had problems with that polyphaser. So we're gonna leave that associated, we're gonna leave that connected to the DX Commander and go through the pass through for the 05. Atlanta, Atlanta is on. I'm here in Atlanta, no problem. That's Atlanta. Oh, and uh, we'll Germany, Bulgaria, somewhere in there. In there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, let's go test to 05. All let's right. continue. All right, I'll let you get back in the captain's chair. Cool. Like I said, uh, the polyphasers canceled out the uh, 12 volts uh, DC current that's going through the uh, the Messi Poloni Ultraflex 7. I just changed out my coax that's from the Radio Shack to the pass-through, but I'm still using RG213 from the uh, window about 150 foot worth of uh, RG213 that's being connected to the MFJ998RT. So let's try it now. I'm gonna unmute the audio. We're on 20 meters. Let's find a, a, a open frequency. There's the waterfall. All right, someone's on that frequency. Two eighty three. Okay, just listening for a little bit. No one's talking. I'm on RTTY. Percentage power is twenty percent. Tuners off, and we're going to transmit. Since I had this already tuned, SWR is looking at one point three, and about. Uh, 13 watts something 13 to 15 watts out since that's already tuned let's go to a different band let's go uh, 18 megs 17 meters I'm listening no activities again RTTY with 20% power tuning now you see the SW, I'm sorry, you see the SWR is flickering? It's finding a solution. There you go. SWR is reading 1.0 with about 15 watts of power output. And up here also is showing is 1.0. Satisfactory. All right, let's go to down in the low band. Let's go to 80 meters. Okay, 3.950 megahertz. RTTY, no activity. Again, that's 20% power output and transmitting. Tuning now. Okay, it's giving me 1.5. And uh, that's satisfactory. All right, we're in the general band for the uh, 80 meters. This is the beginning of the uh, the band for general class license. Uh, RTTY with 20 watts of power or 20% power transmitting now. It's finding a solution. You can see here. It's still trying to find a solution. Maybe it cannot find. It found. It found it. Uh, we're looking at 1.7 and about 15 watts of power output. And right there on the SWR, about 1.7. It took a little longer. 
That yeah, one. Yeah, because we, we went there before. Uh huh. I said I wanted you to go somewhere that's different. Let's go 160. We 1.9. Here, donkey, you hear it? And looking at 24, 9.30-ish. RTTY. There, 24, 9.30. Twenty watts of power and tune. You can see the SWR. It found a resolution really fast. SWR is one point two and fifteen watts out. Moving along, uh, try fifteen meters. Twenty one two seventy five. Twenty percent power, and we're tuning. All right, it's found a resolution at about one point four. Seven dot two hundred. All right, I'm listening right now. For any activity, someone else tuned up. Power outputs twenty percent. RTTY is the motor operation. I'm going to go off frequency a little bit. I'm going to go to the right. 7202. 7203. Transmitting now. Alright. It found the resolution right away. SW is like 1.3 ish and putting about uh, 15 watts out. 226, the guys are on? Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the 226. Sideband. Dang, look at all that noise. RF gain. All right, I'm not using an amplifier. Should I use an amplifier with this? All right, shoot. Power. All right, we'll take a look, guys. I'm gonna power up the Starship amplifier. It's already connected. Power are on. All right, I gotta warm this bad boy up. It's tubes. I got 205 seconds remaining. Now. The PAL star is no longer connected. It's out of line. Out of line. It's out of the picture. It's not a part of my flow chart. So I'm going to take this, box it up, and keep it for a standby. Just in case if my tuner goes out of service, I got a backup. You need a backup, or else you'll be off air. So let's uh, give me a few seconds. Let me warm this bad boy up. And we're going to try to make establish communications on 40 meters while the amp is warm enough I'm going to uh, try to establish contact with 100 watts I didn't tune for 226 it was tuned for 203 so it's 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 gonna automatically tune when it's out of uh, uh, t what did we we set the parameters to uh, one to one to one so it's gonna do its best and for VFR it's the is 1.5 and for VFR November for Victor Foxtrot Romeo Jacksonville Florida Yeah, guys, uh, I'm running barefoot right now. Amplifier is warming up. I'm using the uh, Zero 05 antenna with the new uh, MFJ998RT. Oh, wow. 
fully modified too, huh? Fully modified to, uh, to your uh, specs. I put the washer and I put uh, the heat shrink. And I'm recording right now, so uh, right now barefoot, 100 watts uh, on this frequency. I'm putting out uh, 100 watts and uh, SWR is 1.3. I roger that and I'm gonna keep the uh, Palstar AT2K as a backup I'm tempted to sell it but it's hard to go by to pick one up again so I'm just gonna keep it um, they're roughly around like four to five hundred dollars so I want to go ahead and keep that one as a backup yes it's come to a point where you really need a backup for everything in the shack yeah QSL Right now, I have no other radio backup except the 991A that uh, I'll try to sell. And um, other than that, uh, save up my pennies. As I'm walking to the airport, I'll pick up a lot of pennies, coins, and uh, hopefully get an Anon. And then I'll take this 7610, and, uh, and Mikey has first dibs if he still wants it. I got, I got two radios, I ain't gonna get greedy, and uh, cause she'll beat me if I do. <laughs> okay, that's all. Alright, uh, stand by, let me go off frequency, uh, N4 VFR, I'm going to uh, turn on this amplifier, it's warming up, it should be ready in about a few seconds. Right, yeah, I'm using the uh, 998 uh, tuner. That's correct. And, and you know what happened? Uh, when I first, uh, it's on the video, but uh, when I was trying to uh, tune, I had no response on certain bands, and then we ended up troubleshooting and found out the polyphasers was grounding the, uh, the uh, bias T current, the 12 volt DC. So I, the, the 998 was not getting the power to tune. The polyphaser lightning arrester. Yeah. Okay, N4 VFR. I'll be right back. Let me go off frequency and tune. N4 VFR. I'm back on frequency. the zero five antenna and uh, receive a copy November 4 Victor Foxtrot Romeo uh, 400 watts SWR 1.2 right, <laughs> people talking I can't hear the guy All right, so he's, he's troubleshooting with another guy. I'm just going to take a pause. All right, guys, uh, N4 VFR. I'm recording now and looking at the IC7610, showing no SWRs, uh, perfect match, and the antenna tuner, the built-in tuner is off, and we are using the 998. The amplifier that I'm running is the uh, OM2000. Over. Roger, roger. And, uh, did you work the other yeah, we tuned at various bands, but you guys are the first contact uh, with the new setup. I just wanted to uh, work it out. You know what I want to do, though? I want to get another meter and put it in front of me from uh, the, uh, the meter at the amp, uh, after the amp, because uh, I'm looking so the crosshairs. It's hard for me to look at it, but it's a perfect match from the radio. Okay, yeah. 
that the, 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 the meter on the uh, tuner, uh, the crosshairs are moving. It's detecting some SWRs, but uh, it's indicating an SWR is 1.8, uh, sometimes 1.6, but uh, it's within tolerance for the amplifier to use. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, if it's bouncing, it's really not an accurate reading anyway, so that may not be true. It could just be stray RF that uh, it's dealing with on the inside of the tuner where, you know, where it actually does the tuning. And there's a lot of RF in there that has to be balanced out. It's picking that up and that's when you see it bouncing and stuff. And then I can read it. So you got to do it dead key. Okay, yeah, I'm talking. Okay, well, I'm satisfied with this. And uh, Mikey's been here um, pretty much uh, helping me out and uh, drinking uh, water and uh, and uh, helping troubleshoot so we got uh, we accomplished a lot today and uh, making this video for uh, you guys and thanks Dom I gave you credit on my video so when you watch this video uh, you will hear your name and call sign so uh, I appreciate the help and uh, the modification that I did for future uh, problems so I want to avoid that oh yeah yeah it was on there. I mean, I didn't discover that. I got that to go like to the uh, YouTubers that did it. Okay, QSL. Yeah, we also troubleshot where uh, we didn't get no power to the um, to the 998RT itself, and we found out that the polyphaser grounded out the the uh, the bias T power, the 12 volt DC. Uh, it went straight to ground, so uh, we found that to be the problem. And uh, we also tested that uh, polyphaser was still good. I don't know how else to test it, except to test it on, a, on a, uh, my DX Commander. So we just basically flip-flop the pass-through. Um, now the polyphaser is now connected to the DX Commander. And now the, the, uh, from the amplifier, it's just going through the pass-through with a uh, barrel connector and then at the other side of the window pass through the barrel connector to a 259 that's going to go all the way to the antenna tuner so it's all working out fine now and uh, I appreciate it guys um, all your help and let me talk to you guys later I, I got to uh, finish up this video do a little outro and then uh, Mikey's got to head on back home uh, take care of his family there uh, so for now uh, W4DOM and 4 VFR in the group and for VFR W40. Yeah, so uh, I think we can say the essence is that you have the uh, polyphaser between the output of the uh, tuner and the antenna in between there, right? No, negative. It's uh, after the amplifier, it's in my bedroom pass through window. And uh, from that point on, then that other coax it's not getting the on the other side of the window there's no voltage dc 12 volt dc going to the tuner that's why the tuner wasn't uh, actuating oh, i was going to say because the common phase is on one side as long as it's on the output of the tuner you know the and the there's no, there's no uh, dc voltage there yeah that's a good place to put it um very good yeah i understand what you're saying there um, but I'm going to uh, try it without it for now and see how that works. And um, I also got a temporary uh, braided um, uh, stainless steel grounding uh, cable or, or flexible uh, cable, braided cable, stainless steel. And that's just temporary until I get my, uh, have more time to hook up a, a grounding bonding strap. I got you. Yeah. All righty. Uh, Art, are you here in uh, uh, Captain Newton? Oh, yeah. Big time. Uh, probably the strongest I've heard since there, and honestly, I, mean, I know your signal quite well, and I know the main conditions aren't the best at the moment, but I'm going to venture to say when you're prime, I'm, I'm going to say this antenna with the tuner is stronger than the other one. Okay. Thanks, Art. Uh... I appreciate it. I think that's the the same set as Doug's using. He's using a vertical with the 998 at the base of his uh, antenna. Uh, you were in the noise. Try again. What, what length is that vertical? 
Now mine is 43 feet tall. It's the 0543 foot version and the uh, the coax for the counterpoise from the uh, pass-through window it's a uh, RG213 150 feet Ah oh, beautiful that's a great setup uh, there's nothing more optimal than the auto tuner at the Bay City antenna that is perfection Yes sir that is correct uh, appreciate it guys Art and Dom and whoever whoever's listening out there the shortwave listeners uh, this is November 4, Victor Foxtrot Rovio. I'm going to have to sign with you guys so I can finish this video, the, do the outro, and uh, tomorrow when I get a chance I'll edit it and you'll see it in a couple of uh, days. Alright Captain, uh, Derek, you have a good day. Number 4 New York. Back over to New York for uh, any of those guys up north to pick it up again. Okay, N4QNT uh, W4DOM. This is N4VFR. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening, and we'll chat with you later tonight. Hi, N4VFR W4DOM 73. All right, guys. Wow, it's been a, a tough day battling the heat, coming up with a plan on how to, to connect this 998. We ended up putting it on a 2x4 and uh, test and operating it when we tested it there was an issue with no power to the uh, 998 rt because the polyphaser grounded out the 12 volt dc so lessons learned if you experience that problem it's probably the polyphaser or your lightning arrestor at your pass through window the best thing to do with that was is to to take that off and then you're gonna put it after the amplifier. So that's gonna entail to me have another jumper cable to the polyphaser and then ground that again. And then from the polyphaser direct to the, to the uh, four to one uh, un un of the zero five antenna. But I'm not gonna do that. I'll go ahead and take the risk with the, the lightning arrestor and, uh, and operate it this way. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider to subscribe. It motivates me to make more videos for you guys. I'm a busy man. I'm flying airplanes and, and taking care of my family, but I love to make videos for you guys. It's all learning. Um, I'm learning, you're learning, and it's a good reference if, uh, for those that are watching that wanted to, to take a look of a product this is my personal product. I use it here at my radio station here at Atlantic Beach in Jacksonville, Florida. You can look me up. My name is Captain Darren. My amateur radio call sign, November 4, Victor Foxtrot Romeo. Until next time, 73s. Thank you for watching and have a great day.